Yes, hello. Welcome everybody to this webinar about the impact on the Ukra of the Ukrainian war on real faith. Yes, hello everybody and welcome to the people in the studio. Welcome Rien Golden from KLG Europe. Thank you for joining us. Bart Pauls from Newsblad Transport. Thank you for being here. My name is Mayuri van Leyen, Editor-in-Chief of RealFreight.com. Now, we are here to discuss the impact of the war and especially the sanctions. It was five days ago that Russia launched military attacks on Ukraine. One day later, the first sanctions were imposed and ever since, new sanctions have been added to that list. And this has an impact or will have an impact on the new silk growth and real freight in general. But what exactly that impact is, is not easy to understand. And that's why we have organized this webinar. And of course, we are not alone. We have some experts on the table, as I already introduced, KLG Europe, Rien. Uh, on the line with us, we have sanction lawyer Sebastian Benek from Benek Amar. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, and uh, we have Martin Kubek from Metrans, based in Prague, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Hello, Martin. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And we have Jackie Yan from New Silk Road Intermodel, based in Chengdu, China, if I'm not mistaken. Jackie, are you with us? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So we have people from all over the world. I think that's only good because then we can see it from all perspectives. And of course, we have a large audience. We have you, right, Bert? Yes, and if you wish to ask questions to the speakers or make remarks about uh, what's being spoken about during this webinar, please use the public chat on the right side of your screen. And please note, this is not a webinar to share political views. We just want to exchange information and provide you with information about real faith during these challenging times for everybody. Yes, so the sanctions. Now, I'll give you a quick recap because this is changing every mm -hmm. moment. And I checked it last night, 12 o'clock, and there's a very good chance that things have changed overnight even. I wouldn't know now. But last night, we saw that Central Bank of Russia was also included in the sanction list. That is one of the mm -hmm. latest Russian railways is on the sanction list and why and how we will explain that because it created a lot of chaos in the industry. Uh, the sanctions also include banks using SWIFT. Certain banks can no longer use SWIFT as a payment system. This is the payment system for international traffic. And sanctions also include Belarus, which is a quite important country on the New Silk Road. And last, that was uh, surprising, the always neutral country Switzerland has also joined as one of the countries imposing sanctions on Russia. Now, we cannot name them all, but let's start with one of the most important. Russian Railways is on the sanction list. Now, what does this mean for Real Freight Sebastian? Because we were a bit hesitant to draw that conclusion. Maybe you can help us out. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, first of all, Russian Railways is not fully sanctioned. This is a um, financial restriction in order to prohibit to deal in uh, financial and transferable securities uh, such as mar uh, money market instruments uh, and, and such as certificates and, and um, shares. Uh, so that, that is prohibited to deal in as to Russian Railways. Is it is not so that a full uh, and comprehensive asset freeze, for instance, uh, applies to Russian railways. So it is uh, still possible to deal uh, with Russian railways um, or to receive payments from them. However, there are uh, the, the restrictions as to those uh, financial markets instruments that I just mentioned. And those uh, restrictions should, of course, uh, be taken into consideration when dealing with uh, Russian railways. And as you also rightfully put it, these sanctions are very fluid at the moment, and as the situation is also, and thus uh, the situation that is um, accurate for today can be different in, a, in the ne next couple of days. And Russian railways may become even more sanctioned. But that is in the future, and that is something that people will need to uh, take into consideration when dealing with that party. Uh, keep a keen eye 
on on these developments they will be following each other rapidly yeah you said uh, people will be able to receive payments from russian railways does it mean that we can also pay russian railways uh, for the moment that will not be a problem indeed yeah and um for example if um russian railways has persons in in, in its team that are sanctioned is, is that yeah. something we have to take in consideration I'm not uh, fully aware of the shareholder structure or the uh, business owners of uh, Russian railways, uh, but it is, of course, something to take into consideration that uh, in the last 72 hours, almost 600 individuals and entities have been sanctioned under the new Russia sanctions regime, wherever that is from an US perspective, EU perspective, but also Japan, Canada, uh, Taiwan, uh, South Korea also have uh, imposed uh, sanctions and it will be uh, uh, good for uh, for individuals or entities dealing with uh, Russian railways to take into consideration um, if the business owners or shareholders or, of uh, Russian railways have been sanctioned or not. If that is the case, then um, indirectly, Russian railways may also become uh, uh, under these sanctions applicable to the uh, individuals or shareholders of Russian railways. We'll do this because you're, you're saying it in a very smooth and easy way. People should just check. But how do you check? Yeah, that's uh, indeed a good question. You have um, freely available lists that you can uh, um, screen your uh, contractual parties against. The EU and the US have uh, made, uh, made these lists publicly av available. There are also screening tools that you could consider to, uh, to perform such checks. And there are parties that you could um, then inquire assistance uh, by to, to help you to do these uh, type of screenings. But there are uh, freely available publicly uh, published lists that uh, can be consulted. Um, I do have to mention that seeing the amount of changes that have taken place already in such a short period, that not all these lists may uh, be the most recent updated lists. So it would be good to um, yeah, carefully uh, screen these parties and make sure that um, you are um, reviewing the correct list and the most recent updated list. And if we want to check if there have been any new parties added to that list, what is the best source to check? Well, you have the um, EU sanctions map, which is uh, from an EU perspective, a um, freely available um, database with all the parties that have been uh, sanctioned from an EU perspective. As I said, this is subject to change and uh, will no doubt be uh, changed in the next coming days. So. Uh, yeah, be prepared to uh, screen on an ongoing basis. And from an US perspective, you have the OFAC uh, consolidated uh, list of uh, sanctioned uh, or designated nationals. And that is also a freely uh, and, and publicly available database, which you can consult. Yeah. Now there's one sentence that keeps on coming back in all these texts and which I've, I found hard to understand. So I just want to give a little bit of a tool to these people we're going to try to translate this. Uh, maybe you can help us out. Uh, this sentence, it shall be prohibited to directly or indirectly purchase, sell, provide investment services for or assistance in the issuance of or otherwise deal with transferable securities and money market instruments. Now, that is yeah. something that does not make sense to me. What does it mean? Well, for instance, if you're dealing in shares, if you are a company that is uh, working on the uh, stock exchange, uh, then it would be prohibited to deal in uh, certain uh, certain yeah shares, uh, and and that is what you have to understand under these financial restrictions. Uh, these are very complicated uh, financial market instruments that you have to take into consideration um, under in this text. This is not a prohibition to, for instance, make payments to. Russian railways. That is uh, not included in there. Um, this is something for entities or individuals who work on uh, stock uh, stock exchanges and uh, deal in these type of financial instruments. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that is the, uh, what the prohibition entails uh, at the moment against Russian railways. And, and does the same thing apply to other Russian companies, such as Russian uh, logistics uh, companies, forwarders that are involved on the New Silk Road, customs, uh, border uh, control? Yeah, well, in that sense, uh, what I just also mentioned is that the list of uh, um, sanctioned individuals and entities has grown to about 600 entities and individuals. So it will be good to screen your direct uh, parties who you're dealing with, your direct contract parties, but also their shareholders. In the EU, for instance, if a non-sanctioned party is owned by a sanctioned party for more than 50% of the shares, the non-sanctioned party is also considered sanctioned. So that is something that you need to um, screen then in steps. You need to find out who am I dealing with directly and who am I dealing with indirectly. Um, last night, also a list of Russian oligarchs was published. And we all know that these oligarchs um, have a very, to a very large extent, influence on the Russian financial markets and own a lot of businesses in Russia. And if such an oligarch owns a company for more than 50% or has uh, control over it, then the um, contracting party, the non-sanctioned party, is also considered sanctioned. For instance, Rosneft, its CEO is uh, Mr. Sechin, who is, uh, as of yesterday, a sanctioned individual. And since he is the CEO of, of Rosneft, Rosneft is under control by him. And thus, the restrictions that apply to Mr. Sechin also apply to Rosneft. But in all these cases, the same type of sanctions apply. So it is possible to make payments with them, receive payments from them, but just not that whole market, um, capital market uh, center. No, that is, that is a difference. If a party is under an asset freeze, mm -hmm. then it is prohibited to provide such a party any uh, funds or economic resources. And all funds or economic resources belonging to such an entity should be frozen. So that is a far more reaching prohibition. And in fact, uh, it boils down to that you are not allowed to deal with uh, such a party anymore at all. Okay. Um, that is not applicable for us now against Russian railways, un unless Russian railways uh, shareholders also become part of this asset freeze. Did you see any other parties that could be related to rail freight that are imposed under these uh, sanctions that we cannot do business with them? I have not uh, seen that yet, but uh, for instance, under the sanctions imposed in 2014, you saw that the port authorities on the Krim uh, of Sebastopol uh, were also sanctioned under an asset freeze, and thus meaning that uh, would you come into the harbor uh, and pay the uh, uh, authorities any funds, then you would be, would be in violation of the prohibition, because you're not allowed to make any payments, for instance, under such an asset freeze to any party under a, an asset freeze, such as the Harbor Authority. So again, I would be diligently screening all the parties involved, seeing the amount of parties that come on the sanctions list. Um, that will be some, that will be a difficult task, but it will help you to diligently comply with all the new restrictions. Yep. And I understand it is a lot, a lot to take in in a very short amount of uh, time. Yeah, because it was only five or four days ago that the sanctions uh, were imposed. And uh, I think the market is struggling to understand them. Rien, are you understanding? Uh, does it make sense to you? What, what are you saying? Yeah, we've seen the sanctions uh, on paper. Uh, yeah, we are wondering how do, do they really look uh, into reality? Um, as Russian Railways is a huge organization with many, many, many daughter companies, but also subcontracting companies. And uh, yeah, uh, depends on how, how the whole incident in this region will, will continue. Uh, the sanctions in 2014 were not that effective, but we might have a reason that sanctions now will have a, a stronger power, bigger power than, than before. But I think uh, yeah, the whole situation with the Russian railways is, is on paper, but in, in practice, we do not see any result yet. No. no. Uh, there's a question? Yeah, there are coming in lots of questions for the audience, so thank you for that. This is a question for Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian, Jan François wants to know, 
As I understand, China does not support the EU sanction list. What is the status of transport in Russia being contracted by a Chinese forwarder under contract by a European consignee? Do the sanctions have an indirect reach or responsibility? Well, if you are an EU company, EU operator, so to speak, or an EU individual, uh, wherever you are located, uh, sanctions from an EU perspective will apply to you uh, as an individual or to your company. So as soon as an EU um, operator is involved in this transaction, wherever that is on, as a consignee um, or not, he, that EU operator will have to take into consideration the restrictions that apply. So nonetheless, whether or Sorry? What for a Chinese forwarder? Yeah, that is uh, different because in principle, Chinese entities do not fall under the working of the um, uh, EU legislation. And therefore, the EU legislation is not applicable to a Chinese party. Um, however, it may become subject to EU legislation if an EU entity is involved. Uh, but then still, the EU legislation will uh, be enforced enforceable for the EU operator. Yeah, I think we should bring in Jackie here because, uh, Jackie, you are in China, you run a Chinese company. Um, are you already seeing in any impact of sanctions on your business? Um, I think we've seen some impact indeed, uh, because we, see, we, we have seen some cancellation of uh, bookings, rare bookings already from the European companies. Uh, because these European companies are uh, afraid of, let's say, uh, the, the impact from the sanction, and also afraid of the war that is ongoing uh, between uh, Russia and Ukraine. But if you uh, look at the technical aspect only, if you are, as a Chinese company, uh, making a shipment or organizing a shipment to Europe and back, are you then, because you are dealing with European companies impacted by these sanctions? Or is that a question you would ask? I, I, I think it's, it is a question that I ask uh, also to Sebastian as well. So I said that as Sebastian mentioned that uh, Chinese companies are not, at, I mean, the EU European section is not applicable to Chinese companies uh, for now. Uh, uh, but uh, actually we are doing business with the European companies. How, how do we uh, deal with this uh, sanction? Sebastian, could you give uh, advice to Jackie? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it would be good to get into a conversation with you, EU, with your EU counterparty and ask them whether or not they are allowed to enter into that contemplated transaction with you. Um, for the EU operator, if they act in breach of violation of these sanctions, um, in the Netherlands at least, that can lead to criminal prosecution. Uh, so that is definitely something for the EU uh, operator to take into consideration. And yeah, when dealing uh, with them, um, I, I would think that in that uh, supply chain, for you, it would be good to understand what your EU counterparties are allowed or not, are not allowed to, uh, to deal in or how to deal with. You, you are the good example of that, actually, because you, your company is, uh, has a mother company, a Chinese mother company. What does that mean for you? Uh, well, we do not see any impact at the moment. Uh, we, we are in close contact, of course, with our mother company, Sinotrans, and also with other rail platforms where we book uh, rail partners. Also, um, a rail logistics company, uh, the whole rail industry is together in, on, on this point exchanging the information at this at this moment uh, we see we do not see any impact on it the rail the trains are running tra running in time um, and of course the sanctions can have impact in, in due course but at, at this moment we think as everything is mainly organized in the east part so in china uh, everything is controlled in china and organized uh, we think that there is not a huge um, uh, public who was doing the direct business to Russian railways. Yeah. And of course, the sanctions are there, what we know today and what we have tomorrow, we don't know. But would it be possible for your Chinese uh, mother company to take care of the whole transport and, and leave you out legally or leave you out on paper, for example? Is that a possibility? Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's mainly already done in the whole railway industry on Eurasia. 
So that is probably the loophole that we're looking for here yeah. if you want to do business. Yeah. Yeah. You said there were a lot of questions, maybe... Um... Yeah, yes, there's a question for Sebastian as well from yeah. Ayan Hanstra. How can Russian railways be paid when the SWIFT system is locked for them? Yeah, well, um, I do think that a nuance here is in place because the uh, SWIFT option, the, the blocking of uh, certain Russian banks from SWIFT at the moment is only uh, focused on a selected few banks. Uh, it will not, for the moment, not yet apply to all Russian banks and only to the Russian banks that are already under an asset freeze. So, in fact, you are already, from an EU perspective at least, or from a US perspective, not allowed to deal with those banks anyway. And those banks will be cut off from SWIFT. However, uh, the list with uh, all the banks who will be subject to the SWIFT blocking is not yet published. So that is something that is unclear for the moment uh, still, and there I can only indicate what is known to date. And that is that only a few selected banks uh, will be subject to that SWIFT blocking. And if uh, Russian Railways uses different banks, it may be that those banks are subject to maybe financial, other financial restrictions. Uh, but it might be very, very well be that making payments via those banks is allowed. Yeah. And, and how many banks are we talking? Because we don't have the list for the SWIFT affected banks, but we do yeah. have a list of the sanctioned banks. Is that uh, in, in terms of percentages, how much of that uh, market is it? Well, it is announced that 70% of the uh, Russian banking system will be affected um, with financial sanctions. It is not clear whether or not also 70% will fall under that uh, comprehensive sanction, the asset freeze, uh, but uh, that 70% of the Russian banking system will be targeted, that is clear. So if Russian Railways deals with a bank that is sanctioned and has an asset freeze, then can we or can we not make payments to Russian Railways? Um, well, it, in principle, if the asset freeze does not apply to Russian Railways, you can uh, then still deal with Russian railways and make payments to them. However, it will be impossible to use that particular bank if that particular bank is under an asset freeze. So then you will need to look, need to have to look for other payment possibilities via an other bank um, or other payment uh, possibilities. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually what RZD also said that they will be looking for other banks uh, for now. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, Reen, you told me that you you were still running trains through uh, the new Silk uh, Road through uh, Belarus and and Russia. Uh, any problems with customs? No, everything is working uh, fine. Um, uh, coming back to your question, we see that we have more issues with trucks at the moment than with trains. And uh, so, with trains who, which uh, left uh, last week, they are running in time. Uh, and of course, uh, we see some doubts uh, at customers. They have internal discussions, uh, should we proceed, uh, especially if they have, uh, let's say, a foreign background uh, in America, that, that they, they are having internal uh, discussions. And, of course, we keep them posted how the situation is. If we look into security, if we look into the, the train plans, everything is in place at the moment. And our st ship is still willing uh, to book new cargo uh, on this route? Yes, they are still willing to book. Although we see the same as the colleague just mentioned from China, who said, well, uh, the customers are, are thinking, should they book or not? Mm -hmm. And some, some customers are, are drawing back volume. And what is the risk for them to book cargo a few weeks in advance? Uh, yeah, of course, if you leave China, then you will have, uh, let's say, 20 days later, you are in this area where it might be different than today. So that might be a small risk. Um, we're also offering a total package on, on insurance, and we are in close contact with our insurance company. And they do not draw back the, the, the liability at the moment. Of course, for Ukraine, it's a different situation. Yeah, because Ukraine is a war zone. Exactly. So, yeah. but, but still, um, and that's a very important uh, remark, if, um, if insurance companies are not drawing back their the liability, then uh, yeah, we see that uh, risk is, let's say, limited. Yeah, so it's still safe to book cargo through the new Silkway for the coming weeks, you should say, with the knowledge you have right now. With the knowledge of today, and yeah, 
the, the, the world is changing since five days. With the knowledge of the day, we say it's still safe, it's running on time, and we see also in the past that the trains were the modality who, who were producing till the last moment, and, and, and the road business was, was stopping already. Uh, so uh, we say it's, it's safe, although uh, we do not know what's happening tomorrow, yeah. of course. And, and speaking of the road business, you said there are problems with trucks. What, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, we have already uh, huge problems with trucks since, since December, uh, having difficulties in Belarus, um, not having uh, a border who was, which was operating uh, correctly because of the refugees. Now we have a totally different situation. We have trucks uh, to Ukraine. We do not know at the moment uh, where they are exactly, but they are still in the best part of, 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 uh, of, of Europe. Uh, the contact is very limited with the, with the owner of the trucks. Um, and yeah, the, the contact with trains or the location of the trains is very easy to check and, and to follow. And there we see huge difference, let's say, in, uh, in, in, in the, the, the things about uh, their location. And do you also use Ukrainian dr truck drivers? Yes, region? yes, and, we do. And, and are they still running, or are they um, yeah. going back to their families? Uh, yeah, you, you, have, you have seen the news in general. Uh, yes, they're going back to f families. Uh, I know from production sites in Poland, in Czech Republic, mm -hmm. they're leaving to go back. We, we have seen this information altogether. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, we, we, of course, there is no, no business anymore to Ukraine. So this will have impact. For sure, in the trucking business, and the shortage of drivers is, is already uh, an important topic, but it will have an extra impact on that. But if we focus on the train, then uh, yeah, we, see, we do not see any lack in production. We do not see any lack in visibility. Uh, we have our own containers with where we can monitor where they are. Uh, so yeah, we, we see the same as we saw, let's say, two weeks ago. Yeah. Although that's the knowledge of today. Yeah, and lots of... Attendees are questioning about altern alternatives. Uh, are there any alternatives? Uh, uh, the, the normal route is Belarus, Russia, China, uh, or, or the other way around. Are there any, is there another uh, solution uh, if you want to avoid uh, going through those countries? Yeah, <clears throat> well, we, we see a main port where, um, let's say, a point of entry, which is be the Belarusian Polish border. And it's not the Belarusian situation which, which makes it diff uh, difficult, but it might be the EC border who, who makes difficulties. Uh, we think uh, routes will, will follow different uh, parts in Russia, um, maybe to uh, St. Petersburg, where, where they go on a vessel where they do not have a European border. They go on a vessel and the first Euro European border, border uh, is, is Gdansk or Hamburg or Rotterdam. It depends on how the, those ports are uh, accepting, of course, the, the cargo of, of, of the, let's say, the uh, China train. Mm -hmm. And why is the European border a problem? Now, that's what we see already on truck level since December, uh, when the refugee situation in Belarus started, um, where the European border, or the Polish border in this case, uh, took measurements to, to check everything, and, and which caused a very... Uh, difficult situation on, in the, on the truck market already. Yeah, but for trains, that's not the case then? For trains, it's, it's always <laughs> not the case. In, in, yeah, that's true, it's not the case at the moment. It might be the case in, in, in due course, but not yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Martin, how are you experiencing this situation? How is the market responding to this in your case? Yeah, I would agree with uh, the colleagues and uh, speakers before me actually, uh, I would say the same, that there are clients which are um, currently discussing internally about using the uh, Silk Road in the, let's say, next days. Uh, everybody are discussing what will happen uh, in the next days, not only in connection to the Russian railway sanction, um, also with the possibility to make a payment to the Belarusians, uh, for example. Uh, we have seen some difficulties already with our empty platforms when we go with Metrans empty platforms or let's say full platforms to, to Brest. We need to uh, make some uh, forming of the of the empty empty platforms back to Europe, and uh, it's for us uh, yeah impossible to pay the Belarusian railways for the service, uh, which makes us uh, troubles, of course. And why is that impossible? Um, because the <clears throat> the banks uh, of uh, the Belarusian, most of the Belarusians are on the sanction list. So uh, 
we are not able to pay them, basically. Right, and that is, I think, something that happens a lot then, because Belarus is, is the main transit yeah. country. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so we don't see uh, we don't see any problem with the trains, basically, which are running through uh, with the reloading on the European side. It's much easier. So if we can gather the the, the wide gauge platform to our terminal uh, in Malashevice, then we are taking the uh, reloading responsibility on our side and willing to reload the trains on uh, on our side mostly instead of sending uh, metrans wagons to Brest and uh, let's say take a risk that we will not have a chance to to take them back is this a viable solution is there enough capacity in Malasovic to to do all the handling yeah i can speak for for our our terminal there uh, and i can say that uh, yeah we have the capacity still uh, it's uh, there is not so much trains like uh, let's say in the middle of the last year, so we have the capacity currently to to make reloadings, and I believe that the same situation is on most of the terminal in in Malashevich. So basically, yes, currently there is space. Personally, I'm expecting that the that the train from China into China will decrease significantly. Uh, therefore, I'm expecting there will not be any problem with with reloading capacity in the next uh, weeks. And why do you think this will decrease? I am convinced that the client will not be going to use uh, rail freight in the volume like they did the last year. Security reason, internal reason, uh, uh, let's say decision of the, com of, the, of the management of the companies not to use uh, transit through Russia, all of those aspects will limit the, the, the willingness to, to book on the, on the rail freight. Yeah. So it's not only the sanctions, it's also, uh, from my feeling, it's also the decision of the, of the decision makers in the companies not to use it. So I'm expecting there will be limitation. And, and do you have something to offer them or is this cargo that will shift back to sea or, or trucks? Partly, I'm pretty sure it will shift uh, to uh, to the sea freight. Partly, we are now working on a solution via Turkey. Uh, we have there a discussion with the, um, let's say, rail companies uh, where Metrans is not as a uh, as a rail company. So basically, we are preparing the solution via Turkey that might be possible. Of course, uh, we speak about some limitations, volume limitations via Turkey, that's that's for sure, but might be a solution for some clients. And uh, of course, we are now focusing on the, uh, let's say, possibility to offer some safe uh, solution for the client to keep them on the on the rail, uh, because if we will lose the client for uh, on the sea, then uh, it might be even more difficult uh, to, to gain them back. Yeah. Jackie, do you recognize this uh, decreased enthusiasm about rail through Russia in China? Yes, I think I agree with Martin. I think uh, we do see um, uh, more and more hesitation or shift uh, of the volume from rail freight to sea modality. And as of today, I've even also uh, received some updates uh, from the market that uh, some global folders like a Queen Anago, you know, these folders. It has um, already made the decision to temporarily suspend the rail service from Asia to Europe by rail. Yeah, does that, impact, does that impact you? Yes, for sure, because uh, these uh, this big global companies actually the, uh, uh, the, the, they have big influence on the market. I mean, uh, mentally, of course, I mean, to the, to the direct customers, especially the big ones. If they send a signal to the market that they're going to temporarily suspend the rail service, and I'm afraid that more companies will follow the steps. Yeah. Now, what about customers? Have you had big customers doing the same? We we do uh, we do have some uh, we, we have confirmation from some big customers like uh, you know American companies or uh, the companies with uh, the head office in American or in. Uh, uh, the big ones like ADB or you know uh, or Bear, you know the, the big uh, laptop producers, they are they really serious considering about uh, uh, you know suspended the rail service. 
And then also, I just heard that some uh, automakers or the big auto German automakers, they also uh, think about the temporary suspended service, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, that has a huge impact then on, on the new silk growth. Is this bigger than Corona? This might be bigger than Corona. What we saw with Corona, it dropped down. And after, still in the Corona period, after that, uh, it was a big increase of volume. Yeah. And this is uh, totally different than Corona. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Right. Some questions from the audience? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Oksana Sorokina, and maybe Ring, uh, you can answer this. Kazakhstan is not involved into this war. However, the routing to Kazakhstan is via the Russia Federation. How will the situation with sanctions influence on Kazakhstan, you think? That's a good question. Of course, Kazakhstan is a separate country. Uh, at the same time, they have this uh, custom union with Russia and Belarus. Um, it depends on, on, on the sanction itself. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we do not see any impact of the sanction because everything is organized in China. And they don't, don't have sanctions with, uh, with, with Europe. With, uh, with Russia. Uh, in this case, um, yeah, we, we don't think there is any involvement for Kazakhstan at the moment. It's a separate yeah. country. So just to be clear, if you book cargo uh, from China to, uh, um, for example, Germany, um, you pay to the Chinese counterparty and they arrange everything with their Russian partners. So sanctions should not directly interfere with this. Correct. Uh, we, we, we understand that the uh, sanctions to Russian railways is, is limited at the moment for, for investments. Uh, payments can be done. Uh, who knows what, what, what will happen in a few weeks. Uh, but they can, there might be a sub, sub, subcontractor of some Chinese rail platform, meaning we are not paying them directly. The Europeans are not paying them directly. Of course, you can, you can, you can choose for that, but then, then you're buying and organizing your uh, transport in a different way. Normally, it's organized and controlled in China. Yeah, so, and that's still allowed. But that is yep. still allowed. And there's a question from Kargatai Virat, and you told us that um, cargo is still insured uh, going through uh, the new Silk Way, uh, but she wants to know, uh, what about insurance costs? Are they rising or is it still the same? Uh, we have daily contact with our, in our insurance company, and there's no change in, uh, in insurance costs. Um, it, it won't be a difference in cost, it will be a drawing out if it's getting dangerous. Yeah. And Zita Kups Arvai wants to know what's the impact on rail freight transport for the port of Constanta, the Black Sea, Romania? Can it be on an alternative? Uh, there have been already some tests with those, the, this route. Huh? You cross the Caspian Sea first and then you cross the Black Sea, uh, which is also not a very yeah, good uh, region to be at the moment, by the way. Uh, the, the transit time is much longer, so we, we see it as an alternative for sure. Then you will have no transit via Belarus or Russia itself, uh, but it's not a very competitive alternative. Yeah. And last question for now. Um, some of the attendees are checking if it, via Istanbul is a uh, suitable alternative. Can we go through Turkey? It's mainly the, the same route. Uh, you don't cross the, the, the Black Sea, of course, but uh, you, you cross the Caspian Sea. Of course, you cannot go to via the Middle East, so you, you have to do something in the Stan countries. Huh? Uh, but, um, it, like I said, it's not a very competitive, in lead time, competitive solution. Yep. Okay. Not in lead time? And, and is that the only thing? Or is it also the, the, is the route ready for this huge amount of volume? No, the route is not ready for the uh, numbers we see on the, let's say, the northern route of the southern route via Kazakhstan. Yeah. The real southern route is different, and uh, they, they have some volume, but not that much as uh, via the, diff the, the other route, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And what about Far East Ports? Because Japan has also imposed sanctions, different sanctions maybe. Um, is it possible to, to go via the Far East Ports to Europe still? Uh, Vladivostok and... Via ocean, you mean, or via yeah, rail? Uh, via both, so sea and then rail. It depends on the, the sanctions Japan is uh, posting to, to, to Russia. I do not know exactly what, what they are planning or, or doing at the moment on, yeah. on sanctions. What, what do you think, Sebastian? Does that play a role, the sanctions of Japan? Are they in uh, different in nature than uh, the EU sanctions? Well, they definitely weigh in, and uh, I would definitely look into how... Uh, Japan structures these, but for the moment they 
seem to follow the EU and the US uh, to a large extent. Uh, that can, of course, uh, differ on a uh, detailed level, uh, but I would certainly uh, inquire local advice on uh, which uh, restrictions may or may not apply uh, to you. And I also would like to add to um, the um, yeah, discussion that has now been taking place about alternative routes. Uh, please do note that every sanctions regulation includes a prohibition to circumvent sanctions. So that means that if you are trying to, if you are knowledgeable that a transaction may not be allowed under a sanctions regime, then you're trying to circumvent that to, uh, because you're trying to find alternative routes, that is also prohibited. But so I something. would definitely make sure that that is some, something that is on your radar. But Christian, who will be the judge of that? Who will um, notice it and who will uh, punish you for it, for example? Well, in the Netherlands, um, these investigations are conducted uh, by the customs authorities uh, or a department of the customs authorities who uh, is entitled to um, administratively investigate uh, possible violations. Uh, but also the public prosecutor can be uh, involved and that the uh, case is criminally investigated, which has uh, a far re more reaching um, yeah, way of conducting an, uh, uh, an investigation and looking into possible breaches of uh, sanctions or export controls for that matter. This can be a problem for many companies because we are not even sure how the sanctions will be imposed uh, um, concrete, uh, so everybody is thinking, okay, probably it's like this or probably it's like that, but yeah. um, for example, Rien said yeah, we're doing business with it, our Chinese partner and they make the bookings, so in your opinion, is that a suitable way to go through this crisis or should he just stop doing things like that uh, <clears throat> as well? Yeah, well, we have had several uh, criminal court cases in the Netherlands where the judge indicated that since you are a professionally operating company, you should be knowledgeable of who you are dealing with, not only directly, so your Chinese counterparty, but you should also be knowledgeable about any uh, possible third parties involved in the transaction uh, down the line, who your Chinese co uh, comp uh, contractor may be contracting with. So um, the buck doesn't stop at your Chinese counterparty. You need to do your investigation when you are knowledgeable that a sanctioned country may be involved. And certainly now with Russia, I would definitely advise diligent uh, due diligence into any parties involved in a transaction. But, but what the, how do you define circumventing? Because is that when you look for another route or is it only when you try to circumvent a certain party? <clears throat> well, uh, circumvention is described as knowledgeable trying to circumvent sanctions um, and, and the legislation applicable against certain parties. Indeed, looking for alternative train routes because there is a blockade or the war in Ukraine is preventing you from traveling through Ukraine and then trying to see if you can reroute via Turkey or any other country. That is, of course, um, something that is allowed. However, it should not have the effect that you are circumventing the prohibitions that apply to Russian entities or individuals. Did you know this, Rien? Uh, yeah, of course, you, you, you have international law and you have to follow the, the, the information on sanctions. Uh, but at the moment, we do not see any um, situation with Russian railways. You can still pay them. Uh, and like I said earlier, you do, we do not know what's, 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 what's up yeah. next week. But, but does this uh, last remark make you think twice when you do your ne next shipment? Yeah, it's, it's still legal to organize. Um, and it can change, of course. Um, and different routes, not entering Russia, it's, it's a to total different, uh, let's say, ball game. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, uh, we do not see any, uh, let's say, legal blockage, blockage to, uh, to organize it differently. And, and uh, maybe the government should also be very clear to the, 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 all the companies like, like yours and everybody else in the transport sector, because if you're responsible for the whole chain, I, I, maybe the government should 
make very clear what is prohibited and what is not. Mm -hmm. Because I haven't seen a list with uh, things you can or cannot do. D did you receive uh, instructions <coughs> from the government, for example, on this uh, topic? No, no. We, we, we saw your, your information, we saw the EC uh, communication, and uh, it's, it's not clear yet. And, and lawyers are working on it to, to, to understand that in, in detail. Um, so for us, it's, it's not clear yet, for sure not. Uh, yes. Sebastian, whose job is it to make it clear for uh, all the transport companies and everybody who's involved on this matter uh, so that they understand what is prohibited and what is not? Yeah, in principle, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Netherlands, uh, together in cooperation with the Ministry of Finance, um, usually take uh, the first steps to uh, make announcements of how sanctions um, uh, will, will apply and how they can affect uh, Dutch businesses. Uh, we see that uh, RVO, uh, the organi organization for um, yeah, companies who are dealing uh, internationally, is also now publishing information on the latest sanctions and how they might affect Dutch companies operating um, uh, internationally. Uh, this is something, of course, that yeah, you should again closely monitor because these uh, announcements can change uh, day by day. And, and Jackie, how is that for you? Because you're on the other side of the road. We don't understand our own sanctions. Do you understand the EU sanctions or are you able to gather enough information about it? No, totally not. So as a Chinese company, we have uh, no clear idea about uh, how you know the EU sanctions works. You know, for now that uh, we... We still keep, uh, as far as we know, that the rail is, the trains are running as smoothly as usual. And we just, uh, you know, if we receive the order and we do the pickup and we send it by rail as usual. Yeah, we're just doing business, business as usual. Yeah, uh, business as usual. Yeah. Martin, uh, something else that came to my mind. Uh, there is now <clears throat> less volume, less trains, less demand. So are the rates going up? It's a good question. I think it's too short time uh, to see some big changes from my point of view. I'm expecting that there will be some changes in the next uh, in the next days. But currently, what I have heard, there is no big change. I mean, maybe Jackie also can can comment on the rates from the on the Silk Road. But basically, if I can comment the rates on the uh, what, what we have seen, uh, Silk Road versus the, the Ocean Freight, basically the rate has been the same and stable. Uh, we have, of course, difficult situation in Europe uh, in the terms of of the uh, of the wind uh, in, in the, and storm in the North Europe, where the, the ports are blocked. Therefore, there is still the, the difficult situation on the sea. Also, ports are full and uh, yeah, let's say not working like normal. Uh, so there are. And additional troubles, which which uh, we can see on the route between China and uh, and Europe now. So I'm not expecting that in the few days there will be a big change. But also, in when we will have a look in, let's say, two three weeks, I'm expecting there will be a drop definitely. Yeah. What about you, Rin? What do you think? Yeah, we just have the March the March figures and uh, the rates are stable, uh, not changing a lot. Uh, but yeah, uh, at the one hand we have the sanction story, on the other hand we have the customers, the audience, mm -hmm. and they are making the biggest um, difference. Yeah. If they uh, draw back and, and pull out their volumes, then we have a total new situation. And sanctions, of course, they are there and we have to understand them at the same time. I think the power of the audience is bigger. If we see the power of the audience towards um, Ukraine, um, and everyone, every, a lot of companies, a lot of countries are showing their, uh, their let's say, their, um, their sympathy, then it might be also the case that the audience on the China train, the customers, are having more power than the sanctions themselves. Yeah, and, and, and which uh, side will that go? Uh, for the short term, uh, might not go in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, depends also how the region is developing, how Russia and Ukraine are having this big incident uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, we we don't have a we don't have a crystal ball here. We we cannot predict, but um, 
yeah, the audience is having more power than the sanction itself, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I, we also got responses of people saying, why do you want to ship uh, things through Russia at all? Why, why do you want to discuss this? It's, it's uh, the sentiment uh, that is living among... That's the a sentiment for sure, yeah. and it depends on how it will look like, in, let's say, in a couple of months on, on the development in Ukraine. Do you have uh, questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, a question from Cristiano Vecchi for uh, Rien. Are rail carriers applying cancellation fees for their bookings, considering the current uh, situation? Yes, they do. <laughs> they have the normal, let's say, strict rules. And if you cancel within the, the, the time which is not given to you, then you have to cancel yeah. Yeah. and to pay. Yeah. So, Rutger Leensvaar wants to know, isn't it better now to ship all containers by ocean for the time being? Um, I know that Ocean is having some, some issues, yeah, we all know. Um, and of course, we have two modalities who, who will be left. If, if the rail is to not working anymore, it's there in Ocean. Yeah. Yeah. And just to be clear, Sebastian, there's a bit of a discussion in the chat, so I just want to know your opinion on this. It's from Diana Yuan. And she says, okay, as following the scenario, one, a German company, company A, buys... Uh, 100 chase from a Chinese company B under CIF. And then, step two, Chinese chair company B takes a Chinese forwarder company C who pays China railway company D. And then, step three, China rail company D partly pays Russia rail company E. And her question is, is it legal for this German company A to take its deal with B? Because further down in the chain... Uh, there is payments to a Russian company, but it's maybe five or six steps further in the chain. Yeah. Um, the question would be that uh, whether or not that payment is in relation or can be related back to um, the first uh, st first two steps that you just described. If the German company can be... <clears throat> seen as being involved directly or indirectly in a prohibited transaction. And mainly here, the indirect uh, facet uh, comes into part. Uh, then it uh, can become uh, somewhat of a risk uh, um, to see that down the line, there are being made payments to parties that you uh, have not been aware of or have not been able to screen. And that would be something that you would like to know, okay, who are these uh, payments taking place to? And are those uh, parties possibly directly or indirectly sanctioned parties? Yeah, but if, if you think like that, and it's, it's a remark from Cheng Cheng, yeah, how about a Norwegian company to book train transportation by Finland forwarded to send goods from China to Norway by train? It, it, it means that all the, the, the Scandinavian countries will be shut off by, by train. Well, Norway doesn't fall under EU sanctions, so that's uh, for them uh, positive. Although Norway tends to follow the EU as to their own uh, sanctions uh, regime. Um, yeah, it is difficult for me to assess now case by case basis. Uh, now, at this particular moment, uh, within these split seconds, uh, <laughs> as you might uh, un understand, but. I would definitely look into this transaction and um, assess whether or not any EU parties are involved and to what extent they might be dealing with uh, Russian sanctioned or Belarusian sanctioned parties or not. Yeah, so it, seem, it sounds like a lot of work for you and your colleagues in the coming week. <laughs> well, uh, absolutely. And uh, just to mention, we have a free newsletter. So, Jackie, if you wish to be updated on the uh, EU or US uh, sanctions, uh, then uh, feel free to uh, register. It's free. And uh, we uh, post uh, regular updates uh, on our uh, in our newsletter. But Sebastian, aren't you trying to circumvent sanctions yourself? With your because? advice? <laughs> with, the, with the advice you're giving, that, that's the how to well, circumvent sanctions. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to make uh, companies compliant with all rules and regulations. Um, for instance, uh, it would not be uh, allowed for me as a lawyer to assist a sanctioned party with commercial transactions. Okay. If such a party would be uh, subject to criminal uh, to a criminal investigation, then uh, there is an exception to assist uh, such an entity or individual in court, of course. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has the right to be represented in court, uh, but we do not 
advise our clients to circumvent. Uh, in the contrary, on the contrary, we try to um, let them do their business within the legal boundaries that apply. And that may be challenging, but we see in the end that a lot is still allowed. However, you do need to take uh, careful consideration as to your due diligence as, uh, and as to the questions that you ask uh, before you enter into a, to a transaction. Right. Okay. Um, I would like to close off, if that is okay. with. Yeah, and I think uh, from what I noticed in the chat that yeah. everybody is still a little bit confused about what is prohibited and what is not. And, and I think... Um, we cannot answer all the questions because sanctions are still being worked out by all parties, uh, as I presume. But yeah, it's. I think every people like Green who work here every day, you really need some guidance from the government to with strict. Yeah, sure. We want to work in a compliant way, and uh, we need really strict rules to to know uh, everything. Um, at the same time, all our competitors, uh, rail platforms, uh, but also. Rail carriers, uh, we are rail forwarder, but rail carriers are also doing the same business in a compliant way today. So we would really like to know what is the impact of uh, of the sanction in due, due course. Yeah, yeah. And, and let's hope that all the peace talks uh, are moving forward so we won't be having this discussion anymore and we can then just go back to work. It's a very sad discussion, not only about the Eurasia rail, but also about the reason, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I wanted to close off actually with Ukraine, a question about Ukraine, because we're talking about Russia a lot, and that is the main route. But there was, of course, also traffic through Ukraine. What is the situation now, Martin? You have done a lot of traffic through Ukraine. Is that still possible, or is it completely off uh, the plan? You know, basically, it closed com completely. I, yeah. Nothing there. Yeah. So it, it, do you have any hopes of that returning, or... Or is it a long-term story? Yeah, of course, of course. We are we are hoping that the situation will be solved as soon as possible. It's in favor of the whole Europe, I think. Um, and uh, once it will be possible and we will be able to, to let's say, cross the Ukraine, uh, we will be doing that. But, yeah, that's a question mark, of course. All right, then I would like to thank our uh, speakers, Jackie, Martin, thank you very much. Sebastian, thank you very much for giving us a sneak preview or at least uh, try to make us understand a little bit uh, of the sanctions. And I think we, we should all just follow uh, the news and we can uh, contact you maybe by following the newsletter. Rien? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining you. us in the studio. And Bart, You're welcome. Thank you for moderating the questions. And of course, audience, uh, thank you for participating. And we hope that you gathered a little bit of information to continue your business. We will keep you updated on our websites, newsblogtransport in Dutch and railfreight.com in English. For now, have a good week.